Nvidia is now one of the biggest tech companies on the planet, but can the world's appetite for chips keep growing or are we in a bubble? Well, today we're talking to Alex Tapscott, the author of Web3 and an expert on the chip market. Alex, thanks for joining us. So Alex, you just wrote an article for the New York Post about how Nvidia became the poster child for AI. What's next for Nvidia? Well, I think more of the same, at least that's what the company has been saying and what a lot of Wall Street analysts are expecting. According to uh, a lot of smart people, the company should be doubling its revenue in the next year and then doubling it again. Growth for a company of that size is basically unheard of. NVIDIA is a, a company that's got a market capitalization, so a total value of all its shares of over one and a half trillion dollars, which puts it in the top 10 of all companies globally. So I think what a lot of people are expecting is that they're going to be able to continue being a leader, if not the leader in the AI hardware revolution and participate in this historic moment that we're in. I mean, that's really, I think, fascinating just from a business perspective that a company can be that huge and we're anticipating it to double. I mean, the question that I have right off the bat is are we in the middle of a bubble in the chip market? I mean, that can't be sustainable that they're gonna be doing that much business. Like at a certain point, wouldn't everyone have all the chips that they need? It's a great question. And it's one that I think is not um, answered yet. So far, there has been an insatiable demand for the kinds of chips that Nvidia and others make. They're not the only ones, though they are the leaders. Um, because of the demand from the uh, AI companies and frankly, other companies that are looking to run these models. And so, yes, you're, you're, you could be correct that at some point the demand dries up or as what we've seen in other eras in human history and capitalism, what's known as an overbuild of capacity. In the 1990s, there were tens of billions of dollars spent on laying fiber optic cable all around the planet. You know, in the 1850s and 60s, there was what at the time was a huge amount of money spent on building out railroads and so forth. And sometimes in those eras, there wasn't enough rail cars or later with the internet, enough you know data and value to justify that build initially. But what ended up happening is that overspend on infrastructure ended up laying the groundwork, if you will, for a new era of, of human progress and, and economic flourishing, right? Either the industrial age or the internet age that came after it. So I think it's too early to say, frankly, if we're in one of these moments where there's a capacity overbuild, or if we're in one of those moments where the build is justified by the demand. So far, um, it's been driven entirely by demand, which shows no sign of abating at this point. NVIDIA is kind of seen as an overnight success because of the rise of AI, but it didn't really start with that in terms of their exponential growth, right? A lot of it happened during the, the era of, you know, high-flying crypto that either we've exited or we've entered a new phase of. Can you talk about how blockchain and cryptocurrency and Web3 Web helped with NVIDIA's recent uh, surge? Yeah, absolutely. So before AI became the uh, big subject of the day, NVIDIA... GPUs, chips, were powering different kinds of blockchains, and most famously, Ethereum. The Ethereum network is a $300 billion network that supports thousands of different kinds of decentralized applications, has tens of millions of users all around the world. Until recently, Ethereum had a security mechanism that required a lot of computing power, and it turns out that NVIDIA GPUs were perfectly suited to that. So NVIDIA was making a non-trivial share of its revenue from the world of Web3. Now, it no longer is doing that, but that's not because Web3 has become less important, rather just because Ethereum, that network, has changed to a different kind of security mechanism that just doesn't require as much computing power. In fact, it requires one uh, one hundredth as much computing power, perhaps even less than that. So when it comes to Web3, though, NVIDIA, in my view, is still going to benefit in, in several ways, as are most chip makers. There's right now an insatiable demand for AI computing power, but there's also in the future going to be demand for um, metaverse and for rendering virtual worlds and for spatial computing. And I think increasingly for blockchains, you know, if you expect that uh, billions, if not trillions of dollars of transactions will be settling on these networks and value will be stored on behalf of people and individuals and businesses 
then we're going to need all the computing power we can get our hands on. And I think, frankly, that that's a huge tailwind. Web3, if you think about it, as the convergence of different technologies, including blockchain and AI and these other areas, is going to be a, a driver and a tailwind for NVIDIA and its competitors that are building similar competitive chips.